everybody, I'm Emily Powers and today I'm going to show you how to paint this boy flying a kite. It's going to be really easy and I'm going to show you how to do it in acrylics today. Um, this is the example painting that I did and this is the picture I got it off of from Pixabay. Uh, that is just paint, it's not a bird. My mom thought it was a bird, but it's, it's not. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be really easy, and the colors I'm using are titanium white, cadmium orange, cadmium yellow medium, burnt sienna, and mars black, and I'm going to use a one inch bright brush, um, a three eighths inch willow's blender, and a small round um, for the details. So, I'm going to start by spraying the canvas and my paint. It'll get the paint um, able to go on the canvas easier. And I'm going to be using chalk just to really quickly draw out my outline. So I'm just going to do a real uh, simple sketch here. So it's the sun is like right in the middle pretty much. I mean it's a little off so if you start the middle I guess it's kind of sort of where the edge is. So there's where the white is going to be and I don't want a whole lot of chalk on there because I don't want to get pink in my white. I might have to go over that white again. Um, and then the clouds kind of start just above the halfway mark and kind of go down. Then it's bumpy. It's not straight. And then it kind of goes right below the halfway mark on this side. And then there's kind of like some other clouds right below it, like that. Okay, so I'm going to start with my one inch bright and get the yellow. I'm just going to start with that and go around my sun. And the canvas panel I'm using is a 9x12 Phoenix canvas panel. I keep forgetting to mention what the canvas panel I'm using is. So if the circle isn't, you know, completely round or whatever, you can go back. Um, later and with your white and you know make it more rounded but I'm not going to worry too much about that right now. So then I'm going to get my cadmium orange and add it to the cadmium yellow and if you're using a thicker paint you would probably only have to do this once but mine is I'm using Liquitex Basics and um, the Artist Loft. So they're a lot thinner and you have to sometimes go over um, things more than once when normally if you were using a thicker paint you wouldn't. So when I get to the part where I do this a second time, if, you, if it's covered well for you, you can just skip that part. So I'm just going in this circular motion. It's almost like a rainbow. I'm just trying to make that glow around the sun and it gets darker as it comes out. And I don't want to get this orange too close to the middle, but it is kind of around. Kind of 
close where it starts. So you see it's like a really golden yellow. And if you mix some of that orange with it, it just makes it more golden colored. So it's not as bright a yellow. I'm just trying to get it as close as I can around that. Okay, and then I'm going to get some of the burnt sienna with the orange and put that in. So I'm just slowly making the colors get darker and darker. And really with this first layer, because they're kind of see-through, um, it's not going to be as bright as when you go over the second time. So. And then as I get out to the edges, it's going to be pretty much pure burnt sienna. And even though I'm not worrying too much about going over my lines, um, where my clouds are at this point, I am trying to make sure I go over far enough that I won't have to put this sky back because um, if I did it too, stop too high, then when I go to put my clouds in, it'll be this gap where there's white in between and I'll have to go back. So okay, then I'm going to grab the yellow again and put some of that it's not going to be pure yellow because we still have some of that dark color in there but i'm just going to put some um, kind of humps right below where that sun is And at first I'm going to do like an orange color so it's brighter where the sun is, but then I'm going to start with a burnt sienna and make it more brown. Okay, so now I'm going to get the burnt sienna and put that in. And with that black around it, even the burnt sienna is going to make it look like that part um, partly where the sun is um, shining so even though the burnt sienna may look like at the moment like the sun isn't shining there it will once you get the black it'll look like even where the burnt sienna is the sun is still shining there I'm trying to make it straight lines, um, but if they're not perfect, uh, if there's some, uh, you shouldn't have a problem with um, lines as much, I would think, if you're 
using a thicker paint because it wouldn't be a see-through and you wouldn't be able to see as much where you stop, but I'm trying really hard just to make long sweeping strokes so that I won't get these points that stop. I think you can tell where I stopped if I didn't do that. So now I'm going to get the burnt sienna and kind of put in where I want house to stop. So I want it to be closer to the color um, that's back here. And so I'm getting a little bit of the black. Um, and it makes more kind of like a burnt umber color. So you could use that probably instead for this color if you wanted. Like if you really don't like color mixing, you could do that. I'm getting some water so that it'll flow better and it will, uh, the paint will spread out a little better instead of just staying in the exact spot I put it. I want it to kind of spread out. So I'm just adding water to help that a little bit. And this part's kind of starting to dry, so it's not going to blend very well. So now it's pretty much just black down at this bottom. And you don't want to go too high with this black. It could be easy to kind of lose control with it and put it, you know, kind of far up. But you don't want to put it far up except for on the sides a little bit. There is kind of inches up the sides, but there's this bright coming out around, so you want to keep that there. And if you make, put the black too high, then when you put the little boy in, then you won't really won't be able to see him. And you could also make it a little girl if you wanted to, just kind of make hair kind of because he's kind of like in motion, he's running. So if you uh, kind of made um, long hair kind of flowing um, behind her, you might could find a picture of a girl running in a field or something and kind of edit that in. So you can change it up however you want to. And you could also, uh, when I got this paint on here and my mom thought it was a bird, I thought it would actually be kind of cool if you took some of the black and put, you know, some little birds in it. That would be pretty neat. Okay, so now I'm going to let it dry um, with my hair dryer and um, come back and do the next layer. Okay, so now that it's dry, I'm going to do the next step. We're going to put out a little bit more burnt sienna. Whoops, sorry. Looks like this bottle is getting kind of low. So I think I'm going to shake the sun out a little bit more rounded. It's kind of coming out here. So I'm going to do pretty much the same thing second time. I'm going to 
just going to go around here and I'm going to put some of it up here and it's going to really, it's going to brighten it up just a little bit more up there and because it's kind of see-through, um, you will see the layers behind it, it's just not going to be quite as, uh, you're not going to be able to see your strokes as much the second time. It's going to be more uh, just making the colors brighter. So you can see how it's really brightening it up. put some orange kind of like it's coming around okay and then whoops I think I got a little bit of black but it blended out I can't see it anymore Okay, so now I'm getting to the burnt sienna part, so I'm going to get some of that, and I'm going to make it a little more intense this time. And I'm not worrying about going over this part because it's... Uh, that pretty much that color anyway, so. Okay, so I didn't do this the last time, but I thought it would be good to make it a little darker right on these corners. So I'm just going to take a little bit of the black and add it. So it just gets a little darker like we did down here, so it's more burnt umber of a color now. Okay, so that's pretty good. Um, so now I'm going to rinse my brush out to do this bottom part. Okay, so I'm going to get this light yellowy orange color and put that right up there like we did last time. And then I'm going to get some orange. And put that down. Okay, and then get the burnt sienna. And you can see up against that black how it really does look still like it's glowing up against that dark color. You can also see how much better it's covering this time. Whoops. I don't want that.
then I'm putting this on this side and uh, really the uh, clouds have some lighter colors like oranges and yellows back here but um, we're going to put that in lighter by putting white and then going over with the transparent colors and making them Making them cover over that white and it'll make it uh, look like we put yellow and orange and thing, other things like that on those clouds. But if we tried putting yellow and orange now before the white, it would just kind of just go into the Uh, we're just kind of go just you wouldn't really be able to see it at all it would just totally disappear so you have to have the white And if you wanted to, you could add glazing medium to your paint and it can, it'll let you uh, play with it a little longer. So uh, if you're, uh, if it's drawing out on you and you just can't seem to blend it out um, before it dries, then you can use that and it'll give you more blending time. So you can see it's kind of drawing out on me, so I'm kind of trying to re-wet it right there. And because I got black, I'm going to try to get some of that out and pick the orange back up and go right there. Okay, and then I'm going to get the black and just put that down at the bottom. This canvas is just like not wanting to cooperate. It is moving everywhere today. <laughs> Okay, 
So now I'm going to take my Willow's Blender and film the sun. So, actually I don't need to wet it. So I'm just getting the white, pure white, and going right up against the edge and filling it in. And those other colors are still kind of wet, so I don't want to get brown in my white. And if you want to kind of, you can shape it out more at this point. And if you get any color in it, you can go back later because it's kind of got some yellow in it. I don't know if you can see it, but it does. So normally I would do this when it's dry. But I'm going to take the white and dab in where my clouds are. So you're going to go right up against this tip and kind of tap and scrub in white. So you would probably, normally I would say dry it. I'm just not for just trying to get it done faster how did i get black on there okay so because if you do this when it was wet i'm you have a chance of lifting what you have off so i'm going to put some kind of below it like that so it looks, it's got more dimension. So just kind of add some color in there like that. And now I'm going to try it again for putting in the silhouette. Oops. Well, after I uh, cover over that. <laughs> okay. Now we can uh, dry it. <laughs> I'm like always dropping my brushes lately. I don't know why. Okay, so I'm going to dry this and come back and do the silhouette. Okay, so now that it's dry, I'm going to take my round brush and wet it. And I'm going to start with the yellow. And I'm going to put that right up against, right on that white that's dry now. And it'll just see how it brightens it up like that. Because you want it, the clouds to be real bright up against the sun. And I'll put some of the yellow in here. And then I'm going to get the orange and put that in there. And 
the brighter your light was because if you if you have a little bit of other color in your white then it'll make it not as bright so if you have a lot of white then it will show up brighter okay so now as I'm going out I don't want it quite as bright so I'm gonna kind of mix this in with it in a little bit so it's not gonna be super bright but we can still see those clouds in there Okay. I'm going to get some of the burnt sienna and kind of cover over that so it's not so bright. Okay. And I think I'm going to go over the sun one more time just to get that yellow color out. I got a little bit of yellow in there I don't want. So just going to cover over that. Okay, and that sun just looks really bright um, with this black. It just really, because the sun, um, you know, it's like probably like the brightest thing ever. So it will really, uh, really make it look bright when you have that black down there. So I'm just going to kind of uh, show you the outline of the boy um, with the black paint um, and it's thinned out with water. Um, I would, you could use chalk or um, watercolor pencil or something like that and then you can erase it but if your paint is not fully cured it can lift if you're not careful so I don't want to have to worry about that so I'm going to start him right about here so the top of his head is slightly curved and then it comes down and then it kind of comes in and then the ear is going to start so his ear comes out and down like that just don't don't make it look a semicircle or else it would kind of look like a monkey or something like that just kind of come out and do like a line down and then go back in And then the other ear is just kind of tucked in there. And then there's where his neck is. And it must be cold outside because it looks like he's wearing a jacket or something. Oops. So you want to keep your black um, flowing with the water. If it's too dry, it won't want to 
come off the brush very easily. So then there's this where his shoulder is and it kind of comes out like there's a wrinkle in his jacket or something. And his arm comes down. And then there's kind of a dip right there. And then it kind of stops and his hand is kind of there. You don't have to um, really find fingers or anything for this hand, just kind of scribble like that. And then this side comes out. Like that. And you can kind of see now how it looks like he's wearing a coat. Something like that. Kind of comes out a little bit more in here. And then this side is more up. And then the crease of his arm, the jacket comes up. Up and where the hand starts, there's going to be a hump and then a dip. And you're going to see these fingers. Just a little bit. And the hand comes up. Actually, you're gonna you can go over that with some that color. Or if you don't like something, you can also just do what I'm doing and go back with the color that is there. You can use your finger to blend it out. I'm just looking at it to see if I can see where that spot was. Hmm. I know for y'all it's probably, you can probably see it because it's shining off the light at the moment, but okay, so he's going to have like a Hump there. No, I don't know. I don't like the hand. I'm probably getting picky. I'm going to take my towel 
and kind of make that up. Okay, and then it goes down. And the jacket starts about there and comes down. It's gonna drip on me. Um, the side of him kind of comes out right here. And comes down. And then the pants kind of start here somewhere and you can see where that starts and she's in motion so one leg is on the ground and the other leg is like um, the other leg is, uh, kind of pointing up, so we're going to do that so that it looks like he's running with the kite. So it's going to bend right here. Maybe a little further down. And you're going to see this like foot coming off right here. So he's running. And then here. This leg comes down and then it kind of disappears. So you can use your big brush for that part if you wanted to. Just right there and then to kind of blend it out, you just take some water and Make sure that it matches up the color above it. Like that. So you want to make sure that it's black where the leg stops, but you don't want there to be a black line there. Okay, and now I'm going to go back and just kind of make sure I can't see any of that lighter color that's behind him. 
I don't want him having like this glow and weird spots. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna make sure that's okay. Matches up pretty good. Um, let's see. I'm just kind of looking at it to see if there's anything I'm gonna change. And then the kite, let's see. I want his fingers to look like he's holding it. And then it's going to come out from in between these two fingers and slant it right off of that sun come up right to here so you want to get it as straight as you can but it's a little bumpy it's it's not that bad And it can be hard to do lines with this kind of brush, so if you um, wanted to, you could use like an angle brush. And if you get it off, if you get a hump or something, you can stop and wet your brush and then use the water to kind of pull up the black. You can only do that when the background is dry though, so make sure that it is. Okay, so now the kite is going to stop. Let's see, well, it's going to start right about there, and there's going to be Part that's coming off like this. And then this curves to a point this way. It's going to point um, off, so you would you might would think it would be even with this, but it's sideways, so it's going to slant like that. And then this comes down a little bit, and back out. And I'm going to fill in this part. So I kind of got it off, whoops, on the kite right there. So I'm gonna get that water and put it back. I'm also doing the same thing I do with the boys, making sure you can't see that orange through there. You may want to go over a second time. 
And then it comes to this spot that kind of does like that. And then the tail starts. So it's going to start like right here. And it's going to get kind of skinny and then get big again. And it's going to go around. I think this is probably the funnest part of this whole thing is doing this little tail here with the curly spots on it. And by doing um, sections that are smaller and bigger, it kind of makes it look like it's turning. Okay, so now um, I'm going to look and see what if I like that. I'm going to try to round this hand off. It's a little uh, funny looking right there. And then it's kind of there. And this kind of comes in more. Put it on, wipe it off. <laughs> I'm just going to put that and try to get it as close as you can to the color that you put on there before. If your hand already looked this way, you're not going to have to push it back any. Just leave it the way it was, or is, I mean. just realized it's raining. Who knows how long it's been raining. You can probably hear it pretty loud. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to take my Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen and sign it. I'm using the white because it's so dark down here. And I'm going to do it um, a finger's width away from the bottom so that if I ever frame it, um, it won't cover my name up. And by when you're doing this white one, you're going to want to kind of tap it to get it flowing because if you don't, it's not going to really spit out anything. So, um, I'm seeing if this leg, I'm kind of seeing it's faded quite all the way. kind of being picky but I don't want to think later that I should have done this. Okay, so I think that's pretty good. Okay, so um, my hands are so messed up. <laughs> um, so next week we're going to do um, the squirrel 
And last week we did the kitty in black and white. So if you want to check that out, you can go to my channel and um, see that tutorial. And I have um, a few other um, tutorials, none quite like this. I haven't done any people except this one yet, but I have some animals and some flowers and things on there. So you can check that out. And I hope you will like this video and subscribe and come back and um, see some of my other tutorials. So I'm just uh, being picky again. I'm <laughs> gonna round that off right there. you enjoyed this video and that you will go to my channel and check out some of the other videos I have. Bye guys!